Did you know that there's an underwater road tunnel connecting Europe with Asia? Today, we're going to look at how the road tunnel was built, how the project was funded, and the tunnel's many features. Let's begin. The Eurasia Tunnel, known as the Avrasia Tunneli in Turkish, is an underwater road tunnel in Istanbul that crosses the Bosphorus Strait. The tunnel was built to connect the European side of Turkey, Konkapa, with the Asian side, Kadikoy. The double-deck tunnel is 5.4 kilometers or 3.4 miles long, with the entire route, including tunnel approach roads, being a total of 14.6 kilometers or 9.1 miles if you prefer imperial units. The tunnel allows light passenger vehicles to cross between the continents in roughly 5 minutes, reducing the total travel time from 100 minutes to just 15. The tunnel officially opened on December 20, 2016, and opened to traffic two days later on December 22. The tunnel was first conceptualized back in 1997, when the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality commissioned a transportation master plan from Istanbul University. Following the creation of the plan, a study was conducted in 2003 to determine the feasibility of a new Bosphorus crossing. The study concluded that a tunnel was the most practical solution. Then in 2005, Turkey's Ministry of Transportation, Maritime and Communication commissioned a study by Japan's top engineering consultancy firm Nippon Koei Co. Limited to assess potential route alternatives for the tunnel. The study took environmental and social cost and risk factors into consideration and concluded that the initially proposed route was the best option. The three existing bridges across the Bosphorus were all considered when it came to selecting the tunnel's location. This resulted in the tunnel being placed further south to better balance the traffic distribution between crossings. The tunnel's location was ultimately chosen due to the smaller investment required for a shorter tunnel and the area available for operational buildings and construction space surrounding the build. You may be surprised to learn that no public funds were used in the building of the Eurasia Tunnel. This is impressive considering that the total cost of the project came to almost 1.3 billion US dollars. So how was the tunnel funded? In 2009, Turkish firm Yapi Markezai joined forces with South Korean firm SKENC to be the contractors for the project. This alliance led to the formation of the Avrasia Tunnelius Lemete Insad Ve Yatirim AS, also known as ATAS. A build-operate transfer model was adopted by ATAS for the project. ATAS owns around 50% of the tunnel and will continue to run the project until 2043. ATAS only invested $285 million into the project, thus resulting in the need for further funding. The European Bank for Reconstruction and Development supplied a loan of $150 million, and the European Investment Bank loaned the project a whopping $350 million USD. With the help of some other institutions, the total amount loaned came to just under $1 billion. After more than a decade since its inception, construction of the Eurasia Tunnel commenced in 2011. The estimated construction period was 55 months. However, construction was completed ahead of time in just over 47 months, or 3 years, 11 months and 3 days. Companies from around the world were invested in the project, making it quite the global feat. American firm WSP was in charge of the design, and British firm Arup teamed up with American firm Jacobs Engineering to take care of the traffic studies and all things technical. HNTB, an American infrastructure design firm, was brought on to provide independent design verification. Dutch consultancy firm Fergo completed the geotechnical survey, while Italian company Idelfer provided works management and conducted the project review. To round it all off, the Aegis Group from France managed the maintenance. Due to the size of the project, it was decided that it would be split into three parts. Part 1, Europe, comprising of 5.4 kilometers. Part 2, Tunnel, also comprising of 5.4 kilometers. And Part 3, Asia, comprising of 3.8 kilometers. Part 2 was the only section of the project that was underground, while Parts 1 and 3 were completed above ground, consisting of highway widening and road beautification. Following the completion of the project, Parts 1 and 3 were handed over to the Istanbul Metropolitan Municipality for management, while ATAS maintained control over and continued to operate Part 2. The excavation of the tunnel was completed by a tunnel boring machine known as the Lightning Bayezid, supplied by German manufacturer Haringknecht. Worth over $150 million, the machine had an excavation diameter of 13.7 meters and an average advance rate of 7 meters per day. The operation spanned 479 days, with three crews operating the tunnel boring machine 24-7. The Lightning Bayezid had to bore its way through rock mass, betonite clay, and sand. At its lowest depth, the tunnel is 106 meters below sea level. If the idea of building an underwater tunnel seemed hard enough, imagine the challenges of building one in a seismically active region. That's right, the Eurasia Tunnel is located just 17 kilometers from the North Anatolian Fault, 
which has been the cause for several earthquakes measuring over 7.0 on the Richter scale. Thankfully, the Eurasia Tunnel has been fitted with two specifically designed flexible joints that will decrease seismic stresses and strains. The joints went through rigorous testing and have the ability to withstand an earthquake of 7.25 magnitude. The tunnel has two decks, one for each direction of traffic. Each deck consists of two lanes which allows for traffic to flow smoothly. The tunnel has a speed limit of 70 km per hour. It is estimated that around 60,000 light passenger vehicles pass through the tunnel each day. A toll is charged in both directions, costing about $5 for cars and $8 for minibuses. Trucks, motorcycles, bikes and pedestrians are not permitted to enter the tunnel. The tunnel's lighting was designed by Dean Skira, an artist from Croatia, and supplied by Italian company I Guzzini. Blue lighting is heavily featured throughout both levels of the tunnel, and Skira states that he was inspired to use blue light after studying traditional Turkish iconography. Special gradual LED lighting was also installed to ensure that drivers' eyes could easily adapt going from the tunnel to daylight at entry and exit points. Ataz wanted to ensure that the tunnel was environmentally friendly and in accordance with the Environmental and Social Impact Assessment commissioned for the project. One of their main concerns was that the historical peninsula of Istanbul, which is included in the UNESCO World Heritage List, and the surrounding marine life weren't harmed or damaged in the process. In an effort to further reduce their environmental impact, two air quality monitoring stations were added to the project to ensure emission levels in the region met standards. On top of that, it is estimated that the tunnel has resulted in an annual reduction of 82,000 tons of emissions. Inside the tunnel, high-capacity ventilation with advanced jet fans was installed to provide continuous fresh air circulation throughout. The Eurasia Tunnel was designed with safety in mind. Emergency lanes can be found every 500 meters, and emergency shelter rooms which can also provide access to the level above are located every 300 meters. Bosch Security was tasked with fitting the tunnel with 5,500 fire detectors and 200 emergency telephones. Over 500 CCTV cameras were installed throughout, with the footage closely monitored in the tunnel's safety control center. This allows safety crews to reach accidents that occur within the tunnel in under two minutes. In the event of an emergency, air capacity and oxygen supply can be increased. Avja architects have been given the task of creating the Eurasia Tunnel Museum under the curation of Sanja Georgia Avja. Located in the entrance of the tunnel's control building, the museum utilizes cutting-edge mapping technology, interactive screens, and virtual reality glasses to provide an educational and immersive experience to visitors on how the tunnel was built. The technical aspects of the museum were designed in collaboration with Noah Lab and Nerdworking, while the construction and installation were realized by Serge Akur. According to Avja Architects, the cost of the museum came to $234,000. Located one kilometer south of the Eurasia Tunnel is the Marmor Ray Tunnel, a 13 and a half kilometer long undersea railway tunnel that also crosses the Bosphorus Strait. Unlike the Eurasia Tunnel, construction of the Marmor Ray faced significant delays due to archaeological discoveries. Tunnel boring machines were also used in the construction of the Marmor Ray Tunnel. However, the railway line consists of two tube tunnels, each containing one track. The Eurasia Tunnel is truly a testament to modern-day engineering and has paved the way for many more projects like it in the future. Next time you're in Istanbul, be sure to check out the quickest route across the Bosphorus.